Well, I'm here at the Memory Walk in Portsmouth today to raise awareness about dementia and different types of dementia. My son was 24 and he died of the human form of BSE, which is known as mad cow's disease at 24 years of age. And lots of people seem to think that dementia or Alzheimer's only affects very elderly people or um, early onset dementia in their 50s. But actually it's people in their 20s and we've had youngsters as young as 12 die of this disease. And it's about actually people getting the correct diagnosis for the dementia that they're suffering from. So it's about raising awareness amongst the public but also amongst the medical profession that, you know, there's a blanket label for Alzheimer's and dementia and actually there's loads of types of dementia and people suffering from dementia type symptoms need the correct diagnosis so they get the correct treatments and the correct support. And also CJD is affecting people worldwide not just in the UK so I'm here today to raise awareness and obviously support anybody that's got a family member or a colleague or a neighbour that is suffering from dementia type symptoms. Blake, a very big subject here, what are yes. your thoughts? Well I could, I mean Christine's done a fantastic job to raise awareness of this and I think the point is that it can take up to 50 years too for CJD particularly to, to come but I'm here also to support people with dementia. It happens, it's happening more and more as we grow older but it also, as Christine says, it is happening to younger people too and it's very important that we get the correct diagnosis very early on so it can be treated effectively. Yeah, and my concerns also is that it is, you know, I, I attended a science and technology inquiry at the House of Commons last year and they recommended that a typical dementia in the elderly should be looked at more closely because lots of those are going through is a typical dementia when they could be actually CJD, so that's being missed as well. So I'm hopeful that Flick will be able to help me with that. Yes, I'm, I'm on the um, all-party group for uh, medical research and this is something that I'm going to be asking us to be looking into to do some more research on, see what we can do as far as putting policies into place to help people like Christine's son, you know, that uh, we can get the right diagnosis. That's particularly, I think, something I can campaign on effectively. Okay. And Flick, you know, you're a, a mum yourself. Yes. How important really is it to make sure that we do protect our children? Well, my children are in their 20s and um, ever since Christine's son died, you know, I thought, hang on a minute, what have I been feeding my children? Um, is it going to be affecting them in later life or, or you know, at any time in life, as you know? So um, we have to be very, very careful and it's up to the government really to make sure that we are putting safeguards in place that uh, things like um, mad cow disease then they get stamped out pretty quickly. And so that's certainly something I'll be campaigning for as my time as an MP. And I suppose when you think about it, we've all lived through that era where yeah. we could have, um, we've all been at risk. What yes. do you think about a, a, a screening system, you know, some kind of test for this? Well, I'm sure they, there are tests being developed, if not already, but it, it's very much um, getting the doctors trained up to identify it very early on. So, again, the cause can be, you know, the, the actual where it's come from, I think, is important too. So it's a, it's a huge area, which I suspect a lot more research needs to be done. Some people might argue that the government has been somewhat slow in rolling out a test programme because if all of these people are found to carry CJD, then the members of the Conservative government who were in power at the time might be held to account. What do you think about that? I don't think that's the case at all, um, but, but I will look into it for you. I mean, the latest Health Protection Agency results have found that one in 2,000 of the UK now carry or incubate the human form of mad cow's disease. And a lot of those people will be um, donating blood and actually having medical procedures. And as we know, the rogue prions that cause a BSE cannot be eradicated due to ordinary sterilisation and at the moment blood donors are not screened for BCJD so I have been pushing for a long time for us to have a test yeah. so that all blood donors are screened automatically for BCJD and I look forward to Flick helping me in that yeah. in that aim as well. We're already, um, there's problems with people who've had contaminated blood in the past and I've got a constituent I'm dealing with at the moment. We've been bringing that up um, in Parliament and so perhaps we need to continue that because it, it just could get worse as you're right so we need, I need to bring that up uh, again that might be through the medical research or I'll put a question into the health department. Um, I mean what do you think about the fact that we're still recycling VCJD basically because nobody else 
that lived in this country since 1980 yeah. can actually give blood abroad because Absolutely. we're all at risk of VCJD. I, I mean, I'm horrified to hear that. When I was in um, New York during 9-11 and they were asking for people to come forward for blood donors and British people weren't allowed to be, you know, they weren't allowed their blood taken. Um, so it is um, a massive issue and I didn't realise that it wasn't screened still so that's something which I've learned today and I will be bringing that one up. Yeah, it's leukodepleted which takes out sort of certain cells but it's not effective yeah. enough because people actually have been infected since leukodepletion so right. it's, it's not effective enough. Okay. Yeah, So because I, I know a, a family member at the moment that um, lost his wife to VCGD after having a blood transfusion in, you know, in the 2000s most recently. And are there any tests that can tell at the moment? What the, uh, the, the blood is? The, the blood, yes. There are a test that has been um, actually developed by somebody called Professor John Collins at the Prion unit, and he needs funding. He needs right. about six million pounds, which is not a lot of money yeah. to actually push this a bit more forward. Okay. But obviously there are um, problems with um, various factions that are worried about the test. Now, I, I think it's a bit like the HIV test. You know, when the HIV test first came out, then obviously the prognosis for CJD um, victims and people carrying it was not particularly um, uh, good. But once the test came, we had more treatments for HIV, and now people live okay. quite long and productive lives with HIV. So I think it's the chicken and egg syndrome, really, and we need to be starting testing people, uh, especially blood donors, because we are still recycling this disease. So, yeah, something I've learned today, something I need to go and camp out and campaign for and uh, see what I can do. Okay. So I hope you're word on that then. Thank you, Christine, yes. Thank you.